Hello and welcome to another vlog from Norway. Normally on Thursdays, I'm hoping this will be out on Thursday, but I'm only filming this Thursday morning, so it might be out on Friday. But normally on Thursdays I release my podcast. This is not going to be like a normal podcast, although I will catch you up on my knitting, but I'm going to share some of the stuff we've done for the last few days in Norway. If you're new here, my name is Anniken. I design knitting patterns, I teach knitting workshops online and in person, and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. I am originally from Norway, but I moved to the UK when I was 20, um, and I've lived in the southwest of England ever since. But at the moment, I'm back in Norway visiting my parents. We have tomorrow, and then we're going back on Saturday. So only a couple of days left. Um, and I thought I would just share some of the stuff we've been getting up to, uh, this week in Norway. I'm going to share what I've been knitting later on in this video but first um, at the moment I've got an offer that ends on the 31st of December, end of December and it is 25% off all my patterns on Pay Hip and Ravelry. I'll put the code and the links below this video and also my successful brioche knitting online course is um, at an introductory price so it's £25 until the end of December as well. Uh, from the 1st of January it will be £30. So if you have been thinking about taking advantage of either of those offers, you're running out of time, I'll put all the links below in this video. And um, the online course is self-guided, you can start anytime, you can work at your own pace and in your own time. And if you need any help, I'm there to help you. I share how to knit brioche continental style and English style, basic single colour brioche, two colour brioche, different increases and decreases to create fancy brioche patterns, how to read charts, how to knit brioche in the round, um, how to fix simple mistakes like drop stitches and that kind of thing, and how to unpick brioche. And I also included three free patterns. One of them is just behind the camera, so I'll just grab that quickly. So one of the free patterns is um, my twist hand warmers, which look like this, so that's one of it. It's very flat and it's a very good pattern for practicing basic brioche rib plus increases and decreases. And that's only available from the online course at the moment or my in person workshops. I'm also at the moment, there's also two no, one cow pattern, my course cow and my course headband are also free with the workshop. I'll put all the links to all the successful brioche details below this video. You got to the end of the month to uh, sign up at the intro price. And then talking about these, which I knitted on the way here and the first couple of days I was here, I've also, I also cast them for a twist cowl. So this is a new pattern. Um, if I show it to you like that, because then you can kind of see the center and then it kind of mirrors either side of the center line. I am very close to finishing. I was trying to finish it before I filmed this video, but I have, I think maybe about four, no, two rounds of patterning and probably a couple of plain rounds before I'm finished. So should finish this today, hopefully. I kind of had planned to finish it earlier in the holiday, but I've also been knitting on some other stuff, which I'll share later in the video. Now I'm going to show you a video from, um, I think it was the day before Christmas Eve, maybe. Uh, we went to a nearby island called Yarea, uh, where my parents live is south of Oslo, just north of the town called Moss. And Yarea is an island off that um, town. When I say off that town, it's separated by the mainland by just a few meters of water. Uh, it is quite a big island, and there is a place there that we usually go for a walk when we're here. It's very attractive and you can walk through the woods down to the water and there's a coffee shop at the end um, where you can get drink and snacks so it's quite a nice place to go for a walk and there's walks of like varying lengths around circular walks there's shorter ones and longer ones and when we were there it was sunny there was snow you'll see that the sun looks like it's kind of setting um i think we were there like middle of the day and that's the thing even though we're in the south of norway the sun never really 
rises completely in the sky it feels like it comes halfway and then sets again so you feel like you go from dawn to dusk with just a few hours of daylight in between but when it's sunny you can really tell because the sun only comes like halfway up and then sets again so this is a little footage from our walk around Yarea just before uh, I think it was the day before Christmas Eve Gumli Bean, which means Old Town in Fyrdikstad, which is a town um, about an hour, hour and a bit south of where my parents live, closer to the Swedish border. And it's a beautiful town, the old town especially. I must admit, I don't think I've ever been to the kind of modern town, which is across the river from the old town. But we always visit the old town. And in fact, when we came back in the evening, I looked on Facebook and it said that we were there on that day five years ago. And Simon looked on Facebook and his kind of Facebook memories came up saying we were there on this day two years ago. So it's obviously a place that we go on Boxing Day quite regularly. Um, it was beautiful, loads of snow, um, quite a few people around. Most of the, I think all the shops and coffee shops and things were closed because most things are closed in Norway on Boxing Day. It's a public holiday. So shops and things wouldn't open on Boxing Day normally. So we had a walk around, took loads of video footage and photos and it was very very cold about minus 10.
me share what else I've been knitting. I cast on, I would I ordered this yarn to arrive before I came here. Um, if you've been watching me for a while, you may have seen my pink um, alpaca, swing, alpaca silk sweater. I'm knitting the same sweater in this like smoky lavender colour. And I last my film, which was the last Vlogmas video, I, I was working on the back. So let's see where this is. So that's the back. I think that's the armhole depth I want, but I decided to knit the front and uh, then try it on. I actually think to do the shaping for the front neckline, I have to do four more rows of what I did on the back. But I didn't check that till after I put the back on hold on these like barbicords, I think they're called. Um, so I picked up stitches for one front and I'm shaping the V-neck. I'm about halfway. Yeah, it's about halfway, maybe just over halfway. So I'm hoping to finish the brioche cowl today and then maybe also finish this front. My aunt and uncle are coming this afternoon. So um, while we're sitting at table, obviously I won't be able to knit, but after this, hopefully we'll sit down in the sofa, on the sofa and then I can carry on knitting. So I'm hoping to get a bit of knitting done today. Um, I would like to get the two fronts finished before we leave so I can join in the round because after the underarms it's just straight down in the round and it'd be great to get to that point before we leave because that would make it a lot easier to knit on the plane home we're getting the train to Oslo then train from the Oslo to the airport from the Oslo train from Oslo to the airport and then uh, we always arrive at the airport way too early um and so we'll probably have Two and a half hours, three hours away to the airport. So I'll probably get a bit of knitting done then. And then I'm going to try and sleep on the plane because we have quite a late flight. We're not, our flight's like half past ten or something on Saturday night. So I'm going to try and sleep on the plane. And then when we get back to the UK, we have the long drive from uh, London Stansted Airport, which is north of London, to back to Cornwall. So probably, depending on how often we have to stop and where we have to stop and have a nap, talking about five to six hours hopefully there shouldn't be any traffic in the middle of the night but there might be some uh, roadworks and that kind of thing so i was thinking if i can get this done to the underarms so i can just knit in the round i can knit on that in the car um i'm going to take my i have a necklace so i'm going to take that with me in my backpack so that if i need that in the car i can put it on but we need to both stay awake all the way home because we're driving overnight and because we're in our 50s and not 20s anymore. Um, we are worried about accidentally falling asleep at the wheel, which would be bad. So we've decided that we both have to stay awake and if one of us needs to sleep, we need to pull into services, go to sleep for an hour and then carry on. So if I got something to knit on, I might be able to stay awake. So yesterday we went on our biggest adventure to date. Last week we went into Oslo for a day which I shared in the last vlogmas video that came out on Christmas Eve I think um but we want we planned another day in Oslo so we went into Oslo yesterday the first thing we did was go to uh, Husfliden at Glass Magazine which is one of the department stores in Oslo I shared that in my yarn shop tour of Oslo in September um so when I was saying in September I filmed the yarn shop tour in Oslo I visited four yarn shops five yarn shops uh, so I'll link that video below and Hyman who's Sweden was one of the yarn shops I visited um, it's got good selection of Norwegian yarn uh, Dauma, Sandnes, Hillesvog um, I have been very good so far I've been to two yarn shops I have not bought any yarn yet I haven't been to my mum's local yarn shops there's two uh, one of them I definitely want to pop into so I might do that tomorrow morning um, if I go shop, grocery shopping with my dad, I can just pop up there and have a look. If not, I'll pop down there on Saturday because I haven't been yet and it's a very nice yarn shop and I would like to go. I'm not desperate to buy yarn because I did buy the yarn for this sweater that I had shipped here before I came. So, because this is a Norwegian yarn, I had it posted to my parents. So it feels like I, it does feel like I bought yarn, but I actually bought the sweater's worth of yarn. But we went to um, Husfliden and I had these, um, as I showed you on this sweater, these barber cords. What I didn't realise was that they also do a size bigger. So the size I've got is the small size, 
which I think is up to four, four and a half millimeter needles. I didn't actually realize that there was different sizes, but I saw this pack. I bought a pack of these. I've got two packs of these actually. Um, and there are, I didn't really, there's like thinner ones. These are thicker. These are for five to 10 millimeter needles. And um, I didn't realize they came in two sizes because the local shop only sells the small ones. So I bought a pack of that. I don't very often use needles over five millimeter, but I thought it was useful to have just in case. And it won't take up much space in my suitcase. And then I also saw these, they had a selection of kind of wooden uh, tools there. And I saw these, I don't know who they're by. Oh, they are by Who's Frieden, which is like a chain of like arts and craft shops in Norway. They do national costumes and a lot of traditional crafts and things, and also a bit of yarn. So these tiny rulers, but it's 10 centimeter long ruler. And I got two of them because they're quite small and they have a hole on the end. So you could like put it on something, I guess, um, if you don't want to lose it. But I thought this would be perfect to measure tension because I can just put that across my knitting either way and I know that measures 10 centimeters so it's easy and quick to measure my tension so that's why I got two of those because I thought they were quite useful so that was the only thing I bought so far if I buy any more in the local yarn shops I will share that next week in the vlog When we went to Oslo yesterday, we went to Husleden first and we walked across town, got the tram to a place called Arkebrygge, which is done by the seaside, by the city hall. And we got the ferry there. There's a ferry route B1 that goes around some of the islands in the inner Oslo fjord. So it's an hour long route. It goes to various small islands in the inner Oslo fjord. We've been on this ferry before. I did it once with Simon, once with my daughter. Uh, we didn't get off because it was quite cold it was minus 10 sunny but minus 10 and so we just stayed on the boat i sat inside most of the time knitting and looking out through the window um i did go outside a few times just to film a few bits so i'll share that in this video but it was very cold outside so i didn't want to stay outside the whole time because that would have been too cold
after we've done that, we got the tram to a um, place called Throngleparken, which is a park in Oslo, it's the biggest park in Oslo. And there is a sculpture area there by a sculpture called Vigilam. I think they're bronze statues, sculptures, I'm not sure um, what they're made of. I think some of them are granite, I think. I think some of them are bronze, but I'm not 100% sure because I'm not an arty person. But they're um, big human figures. They're all naked, so they are a bit anatomically correct, if you like. So basically, you can see bits. Um, so I hope nobody reports me to YouTube of this and I get the video taken down. Um, but also, some of them do kind of depict acts of violence, or at least it looks violent. And some of them are a bit more kind of moments of tenderness. Um, I never thought about the violence thing until we were here, I think two years ago, one of the domestic abuse organisations in Norway used it as a publicity thing. I put like notices on the statues about um, domestic violence. So I didn't really thought about that before, but looking at them this time, I thought, yeah, some of them do look quite violent. But there's loads of sculptures there. It's quite nice to walk through. The rest of the park is beautiful as well. Very popular with tourists, loads of tourists there. Um, lovely in the summer, quite a big park, and this is just a small section of it. After that we went there we went back down to the city centre on the tram and um, the tram goes from across the road on the main entrance to the park and the tram there goes back down to the seafront and then carries on to the main train station 
which is where we got off and we went to uh, across the road from the main train station to the opera house the opera house is very interesting it's got a sloping roof that you can walk on um it was very slippery when we were there and they'd actually put a fence at the bottom of the roof because if you slide and you fall down it basically goes roof down like that then there's a flat bit and then it goes down like that into the oslo fjord so there is a risk you could just slide straight into the fjord don't know whether that's ever happened but there's ice on the fjord as well at that point um so they put like a fence up i think because it was so slippery so we did go up on the roof we managed to find a safe route up and a safe route down again i've been there before and it's been more slippery than that but you do have to be careful especially if you have mobility problems and then after that we went uh, to the uh, big library there's a big library building building next to it really ugly building outside but it's really nice inside it's got something like five floors there are a couple of coffee shops there one was closed the other one was quite busy so we went upstairs there's loads of tables and seats and there's some if you're lucky there's some more kind of comfy chairs on the side that looks out towards the opera house and the oslo fjord all of those have been taken every time we've been there we did find somewhere to sit and we sat there for about half an hour relaxing i was knitting so i was reading and then we got the train back um so i'll share that video video now to end this video so i hope you enjoyed today's video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and don't forget that i have the 25 percent off all my patterns on ravelry and pay hip as well as the introductory price for my successful brioche knitting online course all those details will be below this video and those offers both end at the end of december so you've not got much time to take advantage of that I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've been to Oslo and been to any other places I shared, please check, please let me know in the comments and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.